بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وإخوانه وحزبه أجمعين In the name of God most merciful most beneficent may he have his blessing and peace upon his beloved prophet and messenger Muhammad all prophets all messengers and everyone who follows their footsteps and we ask him the most high the almighty to help us and to give us the power and the strength and the ability to always follow their footsteps i am very happy and highly honored to be here with you in this beautiful mosque this is my first speech in this beautiful great house of god the almighty and i ask him the most high to help me share with you great lessons from a great historical event in the history of humankind. Today is the 19th of Ramadan. Two days ago was the 17th of Ramadan. And that's the date when the great historical battle of Bar Badr occurred. So we would like to celebrate and commemorate this great event and especially for our children to know what happened during this great historical event called the Battle of Badr. But most importantly is to learn the lessons that will help that will help us Muslim Americans to follow the footsteps of the Prophet, the best of creation, and his companions. What made them so successful and so victorious during that historical day? <coughs> First, this battle of Badr occurred in an area called Badr in the present Saudi Arabia which is about 80, 70, 80 miles southwest of Medina. It was the second year of the Islamic Hijri calendar, which was the 13th of March in the year of 624 of the Christian calendar. Only two years after the great event of Hijra migration. Badr is an area of a lot of wells. And it's a beautiful area. If you go there and you visit that area, really beautiful area and its people are so great. It's a battle that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not ask for. did not plan for war because and this is one of the lessons for us to learn contrary to what my, my, we hear from other people Prophet Muhammad is a man who promotes peace not war he did not start this battle he is a man who promotes coexistence. He is a man who promotes mutual respect and understanding and compassion among all people. So what happened that led to this battle, great historical battle? And again, this is especially for our children who are growing up in this country to know exactly what happened. There was a caravan coming from Syria to Mecca, led by Abu Sufyan. This is by the polytheists, the hostile disbelievers. And so Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi with his companions, they planned to intercept the caravan so that they can take back a payback for that which they lost 
when they migrated from Mecca to Medina. It was their right to claim it, to take it back. Because the companions, when they migrated, they left everything behind. Everything they owned behind. So they wanted to take this occasion, take advantage of this caravan to intercept it and take what they had the right to take. So one of the spies of the polytheists informed the head of the caravan that the Muslims are coming. So they changed course and they, the Muslims were not able to intercept the caravan. So that was the only plan. That was the plan of Prophet Muhammad But what happened when Abu Jahl, one of the heads of the polytheists and disbelievers, hostile disbelievers to Muslims, when he heard about this and what happened, he insisted, he decided, he wanted to destroy the Muslims. So he started the war. And so Prophet Muhammad and the companions had no choice but to engage. That's the context. Now, what makes this great battle so important that we have to celebrate and commemorate and talk about it? Here is the saying of our beloved Prophet Muhammad He says, he was making dua, supplicating Allah Ta'ala, and he said, Oh God, if this small band of Muslims is destroyed, you will not be worshipped on this earth ever. It was decisive. So crucial a moment. This is the messenger talking and supplicating and praying and making dua to his Lord, the Almighty, saying, Oh God, if this group of Muslims, small one, is destroyed, you will not be worshipped on this earth ever. This was so important. That's why we need to talk about this battle and learn from it and most importantly, act on the lessons that we learn. So we Muslims, including Muslim Americans, are Muslims today because of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the companions that fought with him in this great battle and they were successful. First, but first and foremost, we are Muslims because of the grace of Allah Ta'ala. First and foremost, and then because of the prophets, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, great leadership and guidance and closeness and nearness to his Lord and the companions with him. And all the generations of Muslims before us up to this day are Muslims because of the victory of Muslims in this great battle. They were so courageous. <laughs> there were few, very few, in numbers and also in weapons. They were so righteous, so close to Allah. So what lessons can we learn? Countless. I'm just going to share with you seven lessons. And these seven are, number one, be a true Believer, mu'min. Number two, place all your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, in God, God Most High. Three, always turn to your Lord, supplicate Him and appeal to Him in the time of crisis in all times. Four, always have a plan, be organized, take the means and work very hard. Number five, lead by shura, which is mutual consultation. Consult the experts in the field. Number six, promote justice. Number seven, 
renew your intention, redefine your mission in the U.S. and act on both your intention and mission. Let me elaborate on each one of these in the few minutes I have. First one, what made these few people, this small group, to be so successful and victorious in this great battle? Their Iman. Not just their Iman, their true Iman. Their perfect Iman. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يسأل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال لله والرسول فاتخوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة مما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم مغفرة ورزق كريم. So what are the characteristics, the qualities of these great companions and the leadership of the best creation that made them earn the support of the Lord of the Universe? Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, this is Surah Al-Anfal, chapter Al-Anfal, scores of war, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. They ask you about the sports, say the sports are for God and the messenger. So, fear God and set your relationship, your relations right. And obey God and his messenger if you are believers. Certainly, the believers are, this is what we want to hear the most, pay close attention how to become true believers. So Allah Ta'ala has told us, Certain, certainly the believers, true believers, are those who, when God is mentioned, their hearts tremble. When His verses are recited to them, they increase their faith. And who rely upon their Lord, they are those who establish salah, ritual prayer, and spend from what we have given to them, they are true believers. For them, there are high ranks with their Lord and forgiveness and generous provision. Second lesson, trust in your Lord. Place full trust in your Lord, not your efforts. You still have to take the means. You still have to make efforts. You still have to work very hard. But the ultimate doer is Allah Azza wa Jalla. The one who makes things happen is not me or you, anyone or anything. It's God the Almighty. He is the ultimate doer. He's the one who gives success or victory, support, guidance, everything we need. We have to place full trust in Him that He can do it. He can always do it and he's the only one who can do it. So when you send your kids in the U.S. to schools, whether Islamic or public schools, do not rely on that effort. Yes, you're making the effort to make sure they maintain their deen in this country, which is great. But put your trust not in the school, not in the teacher, not in the program. Put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jalla, that He will protect you. He can. Third lesson. Always turn to your Lord <coughs> in time of crisis, in time of intense difficulty, hardship, distress, need, necessity. The first, the second, always turn to your Lord. In supplication, in prayer, turn to Him in your repentance. Because again, he's the only one who can help you. And in this great battle of Badr, before starting the battle, and this is the best of creation, Prophet Muhammad stretching his hands. Stretching his hands. He raised his hands. 
the prophets are saying. He raised his hands and appealed to his Lord. Stretching his hands, facing the Qibla to the point that his mantle slipped down from his shoulder. Sallallahu alayhi wa Begging and praying, oh Allah, if this small group is destroyed, you will not be worshipped ever. This is the power of supplication. Fourth lesson. Always have a plan. Be organized. Take the means and work hard. And this is a great relevance to the month of Ramadan. Month of Ramadan is the month of hard work, of action, not inaction, or less action. This is the greatest battle of Muslims, and it occurred in the month of Ramadan. Perfectly related to the month of Ramadan. A supplication and a plan are both needed. Supplication is necessary but not enough. When it's coupled with a plan and taking the means, that's the true meaning of tawakkul, of true reliance upon your Lord the Most High. Number five is to lead by shura, by consultation. This is the prophet. Imagine this. Before the start of the battle, this is the, this is the best of creation. This is the messenger of God. And yet, he would consult with his companions. Even though he has revelation descending upon him. But in a matters other than revelation, you can, and it's highly recommended, that we consult with the experts in the field. And so he consulted with a military expert, Al-Hubab ibn Al-Mundir, who advised the Messenger وسلم, to change the location. When they settled, he told him, it's better to move the furthest to the furthest well, water, which is the closest to the enemy, because then we would cut off access to water to, for the enemy, and this was a key to the victory of Muslims. And the Prophet Muhammad did follow that advice. He did not say, I am the Prophet, you have to follow my opinion. Why should I follow your opinion? Humility. Humbleness. Showing us the mother of how to be humble as a leader. Whether you're a leader of an organization or a leader at home with your spouse and children. Humble yourself. Be willing to listen to a different opinion and follow it if it's the right thing. Showing us the example. Sixth lesson, before the start of the battle of Badr, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the best of creation, the best role model. Look at this. He asked all the companions, is there anyone of you whom I want? This is the time for me to make it right. He did not want to start the battle with someone among the companions being wronged by him وسلم. And the lesson here is the importance of justice. To be just, everyone should be given that which they deserve. To make sure that all rights have been given to people who deserve those rights. We ask him, the Almighty, the Most High, to help us follow the footsteps of the best of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen All praise is due to the Lord of the universe for being Muslims and for Him the Almighty uh, granting help and support and guidance to this great uh, band small band of companions and the leadership of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I am so happy to talk about this great event and to celebrate this great event and to learn from this great event. So I have one more lesson in the couple minutes I have left, which is number seven. And I would like you please to pay more attention to this one because this is the most relevant to us in the US. So renew your intention and redefine your mission and act on them. So Allah Ta'ala said in the Qur'an, this is again, same chapter, chapter and about the spoils of war. This is verses 7 and 8 in Arabic first. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. Wa idh ya'idhu Allahu ihdat ta'ifatayn annaha lahum wa tawadduna anna ghayra dhati ash-shawkati takoonu lakum wa yuridu Allahu an yuhiqqa al-haqqa bi kalimatihi wa yaqta' adabir al-kafirin and when God promised you one of the two parties that it should be yours and you longed that other than the armed one should be yours but God wanted to establish the truth through, through his words and to cut off the very roots of the disbelievers so that he proves the truth to be true and force her to be false, even though the sinners might dislike it. We Muslims do not necessarily go for the easy way. We always have to go for the right way, even if it's hard. Even if it's tough. Why? Because we're Muslims. We're supposed to do what's right, not what's, the e what's easy. So as a Muslim American, I have to work hard in this country. To be a blessing, not a burden. Not to ask for, but to give instead of asking and taking. To work very hard and be a role model citizen, a role model employee, a role model professor, doctor, driver, any, any profession, is to go for the hard way, not the easy way. That's the right way. Because the usher is higher. The prize is higher. And the station in the hereafter is higher. And most importantly, nearness to God is the ultimate one. So, what should be our intention? What we learn from this seventh lesson is to renew and revive our intention should not be wealth, which is okay. It's highly recommended to amass wealth. It's not a bad thing to make yourself strong. A strong believer is better than a weak believer. It's okay to seek high positions in society. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. This is all great to be a strong person, citizen. But, the primary intention behind all of this should be to please none but your Lord. That's the intention. Now what's the mission? And this was the intention of these great companions in the battle of Badr. We're learning from them. And the mission, your mission and my mission on this land as Muslim Americans should be the mission of the messengers. Primary mission is to guide to God, to guide people to God, to invite them to Islam and let them choose. That was the mission of these great companions with the Prophet in this battle and they were successful. And because of them, people are guided all of these generations and they will be until the last day. Now, this is the intention, the right one. 
And this is the best mission you can have, which is the mission of the messengers, and everything you do should serve that mission. But that's not enough. I have great intention, and I have great plan, and I have great mission stated, and I know what my mission is. That's not enough. We need to act on this. It's to act on the intention, act on the mission. How you learn your deen, Islam. You live by Islam and you promote Islam in action, by deeds and action. We ask him, the Most High, on this great day of this great one in this beautiful house of his, to give us the strength, the willpower, to revive and renew and rejuvenate our intentions, to make everything we do for the sake of no one except Him, the Almighty, and to make our primary mission on this land of the U.S., the mission of the messengers, which is to guide people to the world, He can do it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصل الله مع سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وإخوانه وحزبه أجمعين والحمد لله